Hello there and welcome to my arty corner. <laughs> Lost the plot then for a moment. To my little arty corner here on YouTube. It is little in the grand scheme of things but it's still rather bigger than I expect it to be with a huge thanks to over 900 of you who've now subscribed and I appreciate each and every one of you so much. If you're new here or you keep returning to find out what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. It costs you absolutely nothing to do and it just helps the channel to grow and to spread and to get other people who may be interested notified about it. So I appreciate you all so much. Also, click on that little bell next to the subscribe button um, so you get notifications of when I release videos. Most days of the week, not Thursdays, not Sundays generally. generally but sometimes it can be a bit random depending on what else goes on in my life, which most days isn't very much, just art. But sometimes other things do come along that take my time. And so um, with no further ado, let's go to what's in front of you on the screen here. This is the mandala that I started in my previous video. I'll put a link in the description. I did it step by step up to and including how I added shading and how I was planning on adding little highlights and I finished this off because the video was an hour and 22 minutes or something like that in sections and I just thought giving going up to two hours or three hours to show <laughs> the completion would be a bit daft so I completed this whilst the video was processing and uploading or uploading and then processing or whichever way around it is and you can see that the outside rings complete and what I did as well oops I just noticed I haven't put my old focus on there we go um, you might be able to see and especially if I try to bring this up a bit closer can we see no because it goes out of focus because I've put the autofocus on there you are you can see all those very fine lines there which I decided to use as a shadow um, or shadow layer underneath these here and I think that worked better than using the alcohol markers because it's quite a small space and they were spreading a little more than I like to on paper. But I'm quite happy with this. Oh, the other thing, let me pick this up and move it around in the light. I've added silver, a silver metallic silver um, jelly, jelly roll pen to the rings, but also the open spaces I left inside these variations of Tripoli. And I also pop some silver dots in these um, leaf shaped areas of black as well as little highlights there. So not glitter, but just metallic. I could have used metallic water watercolors, but I chose to use the jelly roll for a consistent kind of finish. And the thickness of my rings isn't exactly um, perfectly even all the way around, but this was hand drawn. So it'll do and even I can see the layering and the dimension that's in there especially coming back after a, an evening away from this <coughs> oh excuse me oh dear I'm sure this is days and days of, dry, of lots of heat <coughs> and sorry and just a lot of um, dust in the air and so on <gasps> we've got a weather warning here for Sunday, Monday. Monday temperatures could be high as 40 degrees Celsius in the UK. I'm not looking forward to that day, but luckily the next day the temperature plummets, which is a good thing. One day of that heat, I think I might be able to cope. I shall be lurking. So Monday, don't think you're going to get a video somehow because it may be too hot upstairs when I wake up. So it's due to be quite warm tomorrow. So we'll see. Anyway, so that there's that mandala now i enjoyed doing that so much i've got another one of my circles that i've cut out as i said in my previous video these are about 11 centimeters and i also have here this rather lovely thing and i'm going to i am going to laminate this i think i have got some laminating pouches in the laminator and this is the marcus operandus for a zendala as they call it and it's a really lovely, easy, simple way of marking um, your mandalas so that they 
or Zendalas without having to use a protractor and doing maths and, and whatnot. Now I am, I did see here somewhere, I did have, I've got a little bit of washi tape here and I'm going to use that just to adhere my mandala or the circle, yeah, circular piece of paper down temporarily while I mark in my sections. In fact, I might put one on the opposite side just to make sure it doesn't wobble side to side. Washi tape is a wonderful thing in some ways. I've got loads of it and I've barely used any of it. So for things like this, it's great. So today I'm going to divide this in, well, I have got this, which is going to be um, into 12 segments. So I'm using these inner markings here. And all I'm doing is I'm lining my ruler up. It's actually a set square, but you know, hey ho, it does the job. It's a lot easier to manoeuvre than a long ruler as well would be. Okay, let me do this one. And I'll, if I've missed one, I'll come back and fill that one in a moment. Yeah, I did, did there, but that's fine. I was going round to that again. Now again, I'm doing this the best I can and they may not be, that's the one I missed, I thought I did. They may not be perfect, but I'm happy with that. You can see I've, I've got all of them crossed over except for this one here, which is a bit irksome. But let's see if we can um, amend that a little bit. There we go, that's a bit better. And I shall just take my eraser and just erase some of that out. Pop it, pop this back in and just go there. I'm not so bothered about the ones in the, right in the middle because they will be, they will be fine. So that's my Zen, that's my Zendala as it is. So let me just take this up and this one. Keep my little bits of washi because they'll be sticky for a bit. Reuse them. You know, shame to use them once and throw them away. All right. So I've got this done. So what I want to do now is around my... Oh, I've lost my centre. It's going to be here somewhere. There it is. So I'm going to mark in here some, um, I, I've got centimetres, but you could use inches, um, just however big you would like them to be. I think I'm going to go one centimetre for my inner circle. Perhaps a centimetre and a half here, and then another centimetre and a half, and then I've got my outer ring. So let me do that very quickly um, on some more of these. So a centimetre, a centimetre and a half, and there, there we go. I'm not going to do them on every single line, I'll do them every other. So a centimetre, centimetre and a half, centimetre and a half. Which are fairly evenly distributed, but I'm quite happy with that because, again, I quite like organisation and orderliness in in things like this. Okay, and just one more. So they'll be near as damn it. Like so. So I've got those marked in and I am going to just do the centre one. Actually I can do that directly in pen. So I'm, I haven't coloured this with Distress Ink, I'm just keeping it plain and blank. And um, in fact, if I'd marked them all <laughs> at a centimetre, I wouldn't have such a weird shape going on here because I'd have these um, regions in between, but it's okay. It is what it is and we'll go with it.
So I hope you've had a go at drawing a mandala with me yesterday or are planning to because mandala drawing is really, really a lovely thing to do. It's very meditative and because of its repetitive nature, more so than perhaps, oh, I don't know, I mean, if you do something like a mono tangle or you keep two pretty simple tangles, tangle pans, then all kinds of things can happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide the middle part, I don't know why I'm moving this around, into, into four. Like so. So I've got 12 segments in all, but I just feel that if I had 12 segments in the middle, they'd all be a bit on the small side, whereas if I divide this into four, I've got this nice kind of square shape. Now then, what am I going to do with this? I think I know exactly what I'm going to do with this because I think I'm going to make use of Thomas Padras's Kangula as in I'm going to draw this as if it's can Kangula so we're drawing sort of, um, oops, I missed that completely because I need to go in between these, but it is what it is. And I am just going to draw these in. What I haven't done is leave a, a kind of channel between them, which would be the case with Kangula, but I think by butting them against each other, I can still come up with, or this will still work out in a nice way. So I'm just gonna fill these ones in black, like so. And then I've got choices here because I, I, I could do all of this in this kind of way, or I could go down that way. I think I'll go this way to begin with. And I can use, and you can draw it almost as a, you know, a series of straight lines almost. And then I'm going to do ones like this. And I think with those, I'm going to fill them in a different way. I'm not going to use black. I've picked up my O1 pen. So I'm going to start by dividing these squares here in half and then I'm going to draw two lines on either side, roughly equidistant. So I'm getting some patterning going on there as well. So that is just something a little bit different and I think, I think I'm going to put that there in the middle as just a kind of um, little motif there in the centre. I think I will um, just aura these as well. Because that then repeats what I've done with this central area where I've essentially put an aura inside and again I think that will that will do me for now okay I am going to take my pencil and I am going to do this very quickly I said I wasn't going to do this but I am where I'm going to pop in the other marks so it's two and a half and four and a half and four and um, yeah I'm gonna have to turn it two and a half and four because that will help me 
This will just help me draw the circles a bit more accurately by hand. Um, but I want to put them in in pencil as well, I think. That, that didn't take too long, did it? And then I can just draw this ring in. Because we are going to get something a little bit different, I think, happening here. So I do want to put these in pencil and erase them at a later date or later time once I finished with them. Okay, so I've done that. So if I zoom in, so I think I know what I want to do here. And what I want to do is to start here I've picked up the O1, I want the O3 pen. There we go. I'm trying to work out whether I want to do a mukas going like this, because I'm thinking about mukas. Or going this way. Which way would be the easiest to draw them? I think going this way would be. So I'm going to start... Um, Yeah, I need to stop and think a moment. Because what I'm going to do is I'm roughly going to ex divide these lines. Because this one should be divided there. And use those as my guide, guides for what I want to do. I think. I'm beginning to have doubts now. I am, I'm beginning to have doubts. This is tricksy because of the way I've divided this up. This may be the best way is to use those halves. And then, as I pick up the wrong pen again, I do want to pop some mukas in. But I'm going to start at the centre. I'm going to go up and draw a mooka. Well, the start of a mooka like this. So I'm curling around, I'm spiralling back up and I'm putting this kind of paisley end to it, kind of a, a bent teardrop at the end. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to create the stem. I don't want this, I want the stem to be joined here. I don't want it to be open. So then I'm going to draw another one of these up here. Like so. And again, I'm going to join the ends like that. It's looking a bit odd at the moment, but it'll be fine because we'll fill these spaces in, but I just want to get all of these in to begin with. Like so. And again, I'm going to turn this so I draw the next one in this kind of direction because I'm using then the same kind of hand movement hopefully so I'll get something that's quite similar in size and shape. They're not going to be identical simply because we are drawing them by hand. The important thing is to get them in the same kind of space or place and to Not fret too much if it's not a perfect match or identical. Like this one, I haven't managed to butt it up against the pencil line. But hopefully this will be fine because they touch and that pencil line is going to disappear anyway. 
it's not like the central motif is exactly perfect. It's all a bit wonky already. So let's have a look. I keep forgetting, I hope you've, I've caught everything on camera because I keep forgetting to look at the screen to check I'm still in frame as it were. So we've got these here. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to blow my nose a moment, hopefully. This is real, isn't it? This is my world. Uh, allergies and goodness knows what. And I've taken my antihistamine today, so. But we're okay. So I am just rounding, you know, adding some weight in these little sections here. This is something I've done since I started exploring art over 20 years ago, long before I'd heard of Zentangle or came across Zentangle somewhere. So that, it just creates a sort of like a nice finish, a nice way that things seem to, they do feel, as I say, finished. Okay, tea. Definitely a day for lots of tea, I think. Okie dokes. So I've got these here and I've got two kinds of spaces now in this ring. I've got the little V shape here, which is going to be filled in like this. So I've done these around. Let me zoom out so you can see. Oops, sorry. Wrong button. There we go. And then within these, I'm going to put a little black triangle. And again, it's making use of what's already in my mandala. You know, what I've already got there and repeating it. It's that repetition of pattern. However, I managed to get there. That's a bit of skew wiffy but I, they've joined up, but I can correct that at a later date with a white gel pen. That's not a problem. White gel pens are magic. Okay. So here, I think I might, and I'm going to stay zoomed out for this. Draw another pair of mucha like so and that then creates a smaller shape space to fill in as it were but it also creates like a heart shaped arrangement there as well which I quite like I do like, I do like to put hearts in where I can. Even if it's not obvious that it's a heart, I still like to include them. So we'll quickly do these around the... the mandala. Or zendala. And let's have a look. So we've got that one. Oh, I think we need a little bit of weight there and there. Okay. Back around there and up. And we can do the same this way round. If they end up not perfectly spherical or a bit of an odd shape, you just go with it. Don't forget where they join to the sides as well. I'm just having a quick scan round checking I've done that. 
And then we've got this last section to do the same too. Just like that. Because these are quite um, organic in feel in the way that we've got the imperfections going on here, it's kind of a nice way to make a change from what is quite a geometric center there. But that didn't quite meet, hence the weighting helps to disguise that because I can make it just that little bit thicker. So that's looking really, really quite nice now. I like that. I've got these lovely sort of shapes here. They're one of my favorite kinds of shapes. So next job is what do we do with those spaces? Well, we could fill them. I could use these lines and that would actually work quite nicely. I might be tempted to do that. But I'm also quite tempted to pop in um, an aura to emphasize these lovely shapes that I've got here because they are really rather pretty and make a feature of those. So I'm using the O1 pen and I'm going to just aura each one of these spaces like so. I'll zoom in, try and get my hand out the way. Not guarantee I'm going to do it, mind you. It's just like that. Like that here. I do like that shape. Scrambling around with these. And then this here. And I do want to do something with those shapes that I've put in there. And I'm not quite sure what yet. But what I do want to do is to think about what I'm going to do next because I've got another ring here and I'm not sure whether I want to put um, do you know what I've just realized my dies that I use to cut this out these things out with I could actually use them to draw these circles in more or less but let's do it this way because not everybody will have such things. But if you've got a compass, you can use that. I've got one of these um, tools that you, you know, have a magnetic clip and things. The nightmare for me to use though, because I'm really cack handed. Cack handed is something we use here in the UK to say awkward. And I can be really awkward. Now my question, my, I don't really want to put a ring around this if I can help it, but I think I may have to, just to help give me a place, because carrying on a pattern from these, I think I could find a little troublesome. But I think the kind of ring I'm going to pop in here is going to be a little bit different. I'll show you what I mean when I've done this. Oh. I'm debating whether I fill these areas in with black, which would actually tie in with these quite nicely. That would be, actually, I think that's the perfect idea. So I shall do that perhaps in a moment. And then rather than draw a border out, you know, an aura around there, I'm going to pop it in these spaces. And then these spaces are too small to be aurored within them, but I can fill them with black ink, which I think would work quite nicely. So it's almost like there's a ring underneath 
the mucus as if it's holding them together. Again, you know, later on I may very well, you know, if I decide to add colour or other things, that would be quite nice to actually have, you know, as gold or silver or whatever to really bring it out. So I am filling, going to go and fill these in with the black as I go. So I've got a little bit there to fill in. And actually I'm beginning to think that um, I'll do a couple of these ones with the auras in underneath the mukas, but I've got a feeling I might want to do those all in, uh, yeah, I think I do want to do those actually all in black. I'll have a check. But I just think it would make sense to do them completely in black. And then if I want to break the black up, I might use white, like a, a white gel pen to add little dots like stars. So we end up with it looking like, you know, a night sky, starry sky. Which I think would be quite nice. So let me just have a look. Let me do one section where I just fill this in. No, it's all got to go black. There we go. Decision made. So, yeah, that's better. And it helps the mucus to stand out as much as I wanted to. Now, I'm emphasising the shape of these spaces in a different way. You know, it's using all, all black to do that. But it's the same kind of idea. So I do like those shapes. But I think my idea of adding white dots quite randomly to just a couple, you know, just just a couple or a few in each space, depending on the side of the space, just to tie them all together. But I think that can be quite nice. So there we go. Decision made. Isn't it great? Yeah, I'm losing the sort of stemminess of the mooka. But if that worries me so much, um, gel pen, I can extend that. So I'm not worried really. There's nothing that can't be fixed or made to work. And there may be enough of the stem to suggest that it does carry on. All fades into the, into the sky. Okay, this one's awkward here. Because of the weird way I've drawn the curly round bit inside the mooka this year. It's a bit thick. But I know about that one and I know that is definitely going to be remedied with um, a white gel pen. That's much better, isn't it? I do hope you agree. I mean, no doubt, if you don't, you'll leave me a comment, or if you do, you will as well. If you feel very strongly about it. But, uh, it doesn't take too long to do this. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do. And if I'd thought, in advance, I'd have got um, a thicker nibbed pen out to do this with as well. Because it does speed it up. And it stops me wrecking the nib of this pen too quickly. I am a nib wrecker. Because I can be quite heavy handed. <coughs> That's the exhaust from something creeping in the room. I'm having great fun today. There we go. That'll do for now. And that, that will work. I think that will definitely work. Okay. So, even though I've got the these sort of like in the centre, I may very well use, I'm not sure whether I want to use these, um, Um, 
I know what I want to do. And I'm going to do this in a way that I'm going to create the ring first. I got the right size. No, that's no one. I want to know three. Nicely. Let me pop this in. Because there will be some level of method in my madness here. Because I know exactly, I think, what I want to do here. I say I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I know what I want to do. And I'm not actually going to um, pay much attention, I don't think, or will I? Actually, I will pay some attention because I've just changed my mind. But I'm going to draw some semicircles in like this that go roughly halfway to halfway in these sections. If they're not the same height, same width, not a problem. I just want them to span these lines that I've drawn because they're going from halfway to halfway so they're going to you know somewhere along the way here there's going to be a meeting of you know the um, these um, petally shapes so if you have a look where I've got this it's in the middle of one and where I've got these well, that's sort of like where they meet. It's towards the middle of one of these sections. So they fit in, even though I've got the 12. And of course, you can't see that, can you? Because I didn't zoom out. See, I get so engrossed in what I'm doing. So I've drawn these. So they roughly go from the centre of each section across. Here, these line up the line towards the middle of one of these. And these kind of line up here to where they meet. So it's it's less an obvious kind of change in the number of symmetry. Because sometimes you can change from one number of one, one, you know, from threefold to sixfold or fourfold to eightfold or to twelvefold. And it's not too awkward. But this one is going to be pretty awkward um, because of the way that I've drawn this. So I've got these. So what am I going to do with them? Oh, yes. Perhaps I'm going to do two in each because that would save me going back round again. And I will do something with the one at the bottom. I will. But not as I'm doing this. But I just think it'll be quite nice. And we're going for something that's a bit more organised and geometric, a bit less organic you know, botanical than the mooka, but still has this rounded nature to it, rather than yesterday, everything was all a bit pointy and geometric. And I am keeping these patterns fairly simple. You know, my mind had toyed with the idea of looking at Thomas Padras's tiger and using that, but I thought something like this would be quite nice. Okay, so... I'm wanting to go now right up to the top. So this is, I'm doing this because I realised that if I did one halfway big, I wouldn't have the space really to fit the next one in. So if I add it deliberately much bigger, I just think that this will work quite nicely. And it gives me the option then to do something a little bit different in this to the previous layer of the semicircles. I suppose it's crescent moon, isn't it? I'm doing. Possibly. This 
see, I could fill these bottom semicircles in with black, which would lift, set them behind this quite nicely. And I was thinking about whether I'd fill them with the um, lines like I did here, but I've decided to go with this. Again, I could have filled these sections with lines to give some density of, of ink, you know, darkness, as it were there. But um, I chose to go all black because I wanted to do the, the idea of the night sky with little stars in. So I'm sorry if you can hear the fan in the background, if there's a, a strange buzzy noise. You know, my software is supposed to cancel out background noise, but it doesn't always seem to do it very efficiently, which is a shame. But it's beginning to get a bit warm. I'm supposed to be in a meeting today, an AGM online. Well, not that I have to be there, but I can attend, but... I had a headache again when I woke this morning and the thought of sitting in an AGM all day. I'm going to flit in later and see what's going on. But um, for now, I'm happier doing this. So we've got that there. A lot of black on this one. So let me have a look. I'm going to go... I am going to pop in. I know exactly what I want to do. So my first job is to aura these, about the same thickness. But again, it's not entirely critical because it will work no matter what. Oops. So I've got that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that there's, um, in fact, I don't have to imagine, I can do it. I can just pop in a pencil line that goes up the middle, like this. They're a bit wonky, but you know, you do what you, you do what you can. So I've got pencil lines up the middle, and then I'm going to draw um, I want spirals really going round like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of doing a mooka more as a, a spiral. And I am going to, yes, we are doing mooka. It's been decided. So black on either side there. And I'm going to do this on each one of these and I will zoom in so you can see what I'm doing better because it is a little bit on the small side. There we go. So just check that I'm in, in the frame. So here I'm going to go like this and then down and I'm just going to fill these little bits in there and then I'm going to come over to the other side about the same height oops and I wanted it to touch there didn't quite manage that but you know I'll just fill it in and neaten it up and if it's if there's a bit more black there than I wanted well there's a bit more black there than I really wanted in fact it's a very awkward one you know they they're different heights in that one and I'm sure others will be so I'll do that again so I'm going to go up down round with a little spiral I'm going to fill that section in that one I'll do that as I go along because it's it gets done it feels like it gets done quicker when you do it that way what well, it does to me so fill that bit in that bit in so let me just move that up a bit because I'm not very good at keeping myself in frame. Perhaps I ought to put some marks on my mat. 
before I start filming so I know where I need to be within. But I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> so we've got that one. And it is using mukas again, but in a slightly different way, in a slightly different form. There's more um, spirality to them. I'm not sure if that's a word. It is now, though. We do spirality here. I love spirals. Been used as old, you know, for as long as man has been painting on walls or you know, chipping away at things. Yeah. Something about spirals that's a very archetypal kind of um, symbol and, and it appears in all cultures throughout the world from prehistory. As I say, from the time men, humankind I should say, started, you know, cave art or, you know, wall, um, rock art and things like that. And I don't know what it is that's so appealing about the spiral, but it is. We are not far off now done here. I do have a bit of a thing for prehistory. And I know, I know why, because there are no written records, no written histories. And it's such a mystery as to why people did things like build Stonehenge. We can guess. We can extrapolate from, you know, um, communities or cultures that exist today to try and work it out. But in reality, we never really will quite know because there were no written records. At the time. And I think that's what's intriguing. It's a mystery and you know it needs to be solved. And so, you know that's what that's what humans are like. We like to know things and to work things out. Curiosity and, um, and I was writing a book for children originally you know to begin with and then I ended up doing a second one of for adults who weren't archaeologists but had an interest in the archaeology I was writing about. It was in Northern Ireland, Neolithic and Bronze Age. And some of the artefacts that were found were pots. And pottery from this time, oh, I fell in love with it and the patterns and everything else. And yet they're all patterns that, you know, are still in use today, which is astounding, you know, perhaps in a more sophisticated and perhaps slick way. But, um, you know, just absolutely beautiful. And I, the books I would love are so expensive that there's no way I'll get them because I could just look at these, these pots. And not just from, you know, the British Isles, but from everywhere. I just love it. The patterns. Oh. Yeah, so as I went, look, that shape's appeared again, this one. So it's one of my favourite kinds of shapes. So I now have all of this and I want to do something here at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create like a little leaf shape like that. And again, I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going roughly from the centre of the top of these up to the center point of my arch. I'm going to pop that in, just turn this around so I can carry on doing this. You're probably grateful that I'm drawing. To, oh, yeah. No, you won't be grateful because you can't see what I'm doing. There we go. So I've now got all of these shapes here and I need to do something with the inside of these to help them stand out. So it's going to be a bit of black. And this one that I'm just 
adding the black to is a little bit on the wonky side, but you know what? I'm fine with wonky today. I'm feeling a bit wonky today, so, you know, my mandala can join the club, really. Because that's what we do here. No two ways about it. Okie dokes, let's go to this one. Yeah, you'll be able to hear my fan in the background, particularly without me talking, but it's a necessity, I think. It's not too hot today. It's not forecast to be too, too hot, but at the same time. So I've got those, and then I've got these little sections around them. And I think this is where the little lines can come in. Can you see, I'm starting at this point here and I'm having them all radiating out from that point. So it won't take me long to do these lots. It's amazing, isn't it, with the weather? Sort of like, <laughs> I don't know whether it's just a British thing, but dear goodness, we can talk about the weather forever. And we can also find something to moan about the weather. So like, oh, isn't it lovely that it's sunny? Yes, shame it's so hot though. <laughs> and, you know, oh, oh, you know, sort of like, oh, rain. Yes, 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 but we've got to have rain. Helps things grow, keeps the, keeps the country green. So, you know, always good looking, either looking for a, the silver lining in the cloud or well, we know what the silver lining is and we've still got to put the, the cloud around it. Brilliant, isn't it? I love it. What makes people tick? And I do like to know what makes people tick, as it were, you know. I've often said, if I ever have the chance to go back to university which I, I don't at the moment or now. Um, you know, sort of like if I didn't have to work to top up my teacher's pension, because I took that early, a couple of years ago. Um, and I didn't have to pay an extortionate amount to go to university. I'd love to do sort of criminal psychology. Or, yeah forensic psychology or criminalistic, something like that, because uh, it has an interest to me. There we go. So that's beginning to look hunky-dory. Now this, these sections need something and I'm simply going to add auras so you can see what I'm doing here. Move my hands. So my hand is feeling quite uncomfortable, my left hand is. Move my notebook out the way. That's better, I can get that down there. Okay, and I might be able to just my hand up here. I don't want to really get it up there because it um, gets in the way of the light, but sometimes it's easier to split this into two moves. It depends where it is and whether I can draw it fairly evenly in one movement. There we are, we've done that. So that is quite nice. And now I definitely want to do something with these. And I think I'm going to take a cue from these. I did want to make them this shape, like so. 
So I'm making use of this kind of shape again, or this, this kind of shape, that kind of idea here. But just changing it that little bit. Just to have them kind of tie in with each other. It's that um, coherence, commonality. And then the other thing I want to do is I am going to water this inside. You missed that one because I wasn't on, on screen. So I'm going to draw an aura and then I'm going to fill this in with black. And I'm going to do that for each and every one of these very quickly. You know, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to have overspills of pen and line and what have you. So take your time. But I'm conscious of the time it's taking me to do this. And I still have a ring to go. And we still have shading to do. And, and what not. Though I may put that to one side or leave that to one side. Um... and to perhaps come back and tackle it in another video. Or, and if I haven't got any instant ideas about what to do in this outer ring, because I really don't know at the moment. My focus is on finishing this. Then I may say, right, okay, you can wait for the next video to see what happens and I'll come back and finish that with you, or finish this with you, this, the whole thing, and um, just see what happens that way. The other thing I want to do here is I don't want any more black. We've got enough black here. But these little sections I think could benefit from having some lines just to fill this in. Tipple would work nicely as well, you know, filling it in with little circles that all touch. That would work quite nicely, but I just feel this would be this just feels the right thing for me to do again I think it's because I've used the lines here and here and it's nice to tie this in somewhere and it's amazing just how something as simple as this just helps to make sense of the patterns that are here really does. I think I know what I'm going to do in the outside ring. My mind thinks about things without me thinking about it, if that makes sense. And suddenly something will pop up in my head and I think, yeah, that's a good idea. So, you know, it filters through in its own way and then suddenly I become aware of what it is. So I've got this and I know exactly what I want to do in the outside rings, but I'm going to need to carry on these splits forward. This may give you a clue to what I'm doing perhaps. So I am aware that I have sort of triangles here and there and I just think that a border made up of triangles would perhaps work really wonderfully. Okay, I am going to put another ring, oh, wrong pen, another ring here. And I'm going to pop this outside because I do not want to try to get lines to match up or anything like that. I don't want that. I want a space between them. So this is a way of creating that space. It's an awful lot of noise outside. It is Saturday though.
for many people a non-work day, which means they get to do work around their house and garden and things like that. So here we go. So I've got that. And I am going to... I am going to draw around this part. And if I zoom out, just inside or just along the edge here of this embossed bit, I may, it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to have wibbles and wobbles here, but I'm happy to have wibbles and wobbles. And then what I'm going to do is a very cunning trick to get another black line I'm going to use um, a black marker along the edge of the paper to colour the edge in and then it will create like a double border an illusion of because I'm not going to draw another one in not right on the edge it's awkward enough to do it here and because I'm speeding up a bit it's also getting a bit wobbly I reach for my black marker. It's that one, I hope. No, that's grey. Black. There we go. Got it. Ah, there we are. So this is my black marker. I'm going to use the chisel end and I am just going to run it around the edge here, like so. And you can see this gives it a nice black edge. It disguises the white edge of the paper, but it also gives that. And so I've now got my double border there. That simply, it's a lazy way, but it's a, it's a good way. So there, you're right. Now then, for my triangles, I'm going to work out how I'm going to do this. And I think... I think I'm going to have the points above these here, so they're, they're, they're echoing these. I could do them, yeah, so they will ca capture those, so that'll be quite nice. So I'm going to draw my triangles in like this. My pen nib is a bit of a pain, but let's do that. And we're going to have a bit of Tripoli, I think, going on. Of a kind. I have a plan. My head is ticking over things, honestly. This is the most awkward thing to do. In lots of ways here but I will get there and if these don't quite meet up at the top or they're not exactly the same I can tell you now I am not going to stress and fret because I know that this will work out perfectly fine and perfectly dandy part of me is wishing that I did this in a slightly different way but it is what it is and it will all work out just fine. And there's the last one. Okay, so I've got choices. I can do Tripoli with the kinds of, actually I think I will, because I think that would look quite nice here. Because I was thinking of using sort of like um, spiral shapes like this and then that way and that way to create the space. But I do think that it could go that way and that way and create that kind of shape. No, I think I'll keep it simple with the rice shapes. So I'm going to do them this way first because my hand will be moving at the same direction here. And again, if they're not perfectly symmetrical on either side, I'm not going to fret. 
because it's the overall impression that we get that makes the difference. And our brains are very good at going, oh, they're all the same, even if they're not. Unless there's a complete glaring error, they'll actually not pay much attention. You'll just see the overall pattern. That really is what our brains are really good at. It's pattern matching. They're essentially lazy in, in some aspects. They're constantly refreshing what we're looking at, but if something's not moving or you know staying the same, your brain just keeps like the memory of it there. And um, just pays attention to what is moving or the most important thing. That's why, why keep refreshing what is pretty much static. Like that's kind of how it works, I think, which is interesting, but yeah. So, you know, there was a time where I would fret about the tiny, tiny bit of imperfection that I'd made and I'd want to start over and make it perfect. But perhaps digital art has made me a little bit more tolerant of such things because I know how easy it is to be perfect in, in digital art and perhaps I don't need to be so much here because of the, um, the human aspect. But having said that, even in my digital art, I, I don't mind imperfection when it comes to drawing. Creating mandalas and things, it does it automatically, you know, repeats around the circle automatically for you, which makes it um, possible to get perfect repeats and so on. But it's, um, I think it's also made me more accepting of how I do like Cretchen. It's made me more accepting of the perfectly perfect imperfections in work that is drawn by me, by hand, because the way that I draw is unique to me. And digital art, you still have that uniqueness, but it also takes away some of that uniqueness. So I tend to try to create brushes and pens, pen brushes and things there, that keep some of that imperfection in, in some way. What I do love is the ability to change things um, easily. If you realise that doesn't work, right, let's alter this or an edit is needed. It's easy enough to do that. Okay, so that's all of those done. Now then, in the middle, there's all kinds of things I could do, but I think I'm going to keep it pretty much simple. And I'm just going to put a sphere in the middle. And my head is debating whether I colour in black around this or whether I use lines. And I think I may be tempted to use black. As a high contrast. Yeah. Because we've got, we've got a fair amount of black elsewhere. But I do like the, the lighter shading that the lines can give as well. I 
There's no real way of trying it out when you're working with ink. If I was working digitally, it'd be a doddle to try that out and see, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we'll go with the black. But I'm not. So, how are we going to do this? I think what we're going to do is pop some black in the corners where there would naturally be some shadow perhaps, like so. How's that? What does that look like so far? It doesn't. Okay, we'll go full black. And this is going to take me a little while. So I think I may stop recording briefly and come back when I've decide when I've done this and decided what the next step is. So if I just fill this one and the next next one in with black, you get we'll get a feel of whether this is the right thing to do. So I was thinking of putting black light, you know, little black lines in this section here, but it just doesn't look right. I don't think it would look right. It doesn't feel right. So go with my instincts and let's just use the black. Not very good at colouring the back in. I think that will, yeah, I think that works nicely. So I will come back when I finish doing that because we're already at an hour and 10, 12 minutes. So I'll see you. Okay, there we are so far. So this is where really I'm going to leave the, the video in this mandala because I need to sit and I need to think about it. I say I'm going to finish it. I'm going to leave it and I'm not because I am reaching here for a white gel pen and very quickly I'm just going to because there is an awful lot of black on this and that's why I think that first of, first of all I want to put some of these stems back in just gently with a gel pen just to make sure that they they're visible because that would work nicely that's enough Perhaps a little bit more just there. Yeah, that'll do. And then I said about perhaps putting in a couple of big ones and then scattering some small ones around. Same up here. I don't necessarily want them all the same. So a couple or one in some. Like so. So that lift that lightens that ring up a little bit, and um, I'm also tempted to pop one the base of each of these again to break the black up a little bit. I've just realised I haven't erased the pencil lines yet, which means they may have to remain because the eraser will pick up the white gel pen if I'm not careful or colour it. So that just breaks that little bit of black up as well. And I'm going to do the same here, but right in the middle of these. So if I do add colour here, oh, I've gone down to this one, so these are going to have to have the white dots in as well. Yeah, we're doing well here today, aren't I? 
trying not to twist and turn things around too much. So that helps break that up. And then with these ones, I think I'm going to put a string in like this, a big one there and then two small ones. Or a couple more if I've got the space. Just making use of that space and um, not worrying too much about counting dots is just making sure there's one big one and then a little trail of smaller ones leading off. Just to break that black up a little bit. So I will zoom in for some. There we go. So a big one, a trailing line of others. Now here I managed to get some black ink in there. I did with a couple of them, but most of them are okay. But some have got a weird shape, so I can use the white gel pen just to cover them up. Not that it's critical here, because I may end up putting some metallic over this. In fact, I'm a bit silly in some ways of adding the gel pen now before I've done any shading or anything, but we'll see. It may be that I'll leave it exactly as it is without mucking around with it all too much now. But I think these white highlights, these white dots, are making a nice difference here. A lot of black. A lot of dense colour, but this is just adding that lightness and airiness that I do be liking. So that's the last one done. And then I'll just zoom out. And you can see the whole mandala as it is. So it's very black and white at the moment. But I'm going, I'm going to decide what I do with it. Um, later on or, you know, I'm going to have a break from it. So I just hope that I've given you enough instructions that you can follow along or step by steps. So you can follow along. Zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing. My thought process of how I have created this and you know it's hopefully something that you'll give a go and um, thank you for joining me is all I'm going to say I hope you like this as well because um, I'm really quite happy with it and I just yeah it's diff very much different to yesterday's. I bring yesterday's in. It's looking very flat and very dull and uninteresting in some ways. But I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. But I will. There certainly needs to be some shading and shadow, but I haven't worked that bit out yet. So I'll see you in the next instalment. Until then, take care and find time to be creative. Bye for now. Bye.